Welcome to Courageous Parenting Podcast, a weekly show to equip parents with biblical truth on raising confident Christian kids in an uncertain world. Hi, I'm Angie from Courageous Mom. And I'm Isaac from Resolute Man. We've been married for 21 years and have seen the fruit from raising our eight kids biblically based on the raw truth found in the Bible. We can no longer let the culture win the hearts of children. Too many children from Christian families are walking away from their faith by age 18. And it doesn't have to be this way. It shouldn't be this way. Join us as we start an important conversation about effective parenting in the following world. Hey, welcome back to the podcast. Hey, everybody. So excited to share this episode with you. Uh, we're shooting it while on vacation. Mm-hmm. I had a little time away with another awesome family up in the McCall, Idaho area. So, and they had this cool McCall, this cool Idaho map behind us. Just thought it would be, <laughs> you know, why not, right? So what are we talking about today? We are going to talk about a conversation that we've had a lot of questions about anxiety. Yeah. So how to overcome and um, have self-control in those moments of anxiety, but also we're going to dig into some kind of, um, well, very pointed conversations regarding it. Um, We've had a lot of people reach out to us asking about how to handle anxiety or overwhelm while having little kids. So that's kind of the main now, if you just have older kids, this will still be helpful, but it just seems that if, you know, when kids are younger, there's mm-hmm. less training opportunities that have happened so far because they're younger, right? Mm-hmm. So there's more challenge uh, potentially there. Yeah. So, and you know what? A lot has happened in, in 2020 for a lot of people and we're in 2021 now. And so I think that there's been more of a temptation or a struggle for a lot of people, whether you have kids or not, to struggle with anxiety and fear of what is to come and what you're going to do. Maybe you've lost your job. And so um, we thought that this would be a very timely message. Yeah. It's more on how to handle anxiety in parenting the day to day. Because, you know what? There's disobedience there's it can feel like chaos sometimes uh there can be a lack of you know structure or you know there could be really you know Mm -hmm. pressing against uh, revealing some sin issues in ourselves and so uh Mm -hmm. but uh it it is a a different i think as i think you're going to share for 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 the father and the and the wife and the wife uh although it's an issue in both camps so before we dive in i just wanted to share with you guys from john 14 verse 25 through 27 just two verses super encouraging it says but the helper the holy spirit whom the father will send in my name he will teach you all things and bring you bring to your remembrance all that i have said to you peace i leave with you my peace i give to you not as the word world gives do i give to you let not your hearts be troubled neither let them be afraid and so this verse came to mind right away because it's a lot of times anxiety comes from fear it's a reaction or a symptom Mm -hmm. of something that has is deeper rooted um a fear a lack of trust um the unknowing the what ifs focusing too much on those kinds of things and so i just wanted to encourage you guys with that first scripture that's john 14 25 through 27. that's Um, awesome but Isaac mentioned something that was interesting. He said, we're going to talk a little bit about the differences between men and women on this. Um, and so I, you know, transparently speaking, I haven't really struggled with like anxiety or overwhelm too, too much over the years. Um, and I'm thankful for that. I, But I have walked intimately in community with women who have struggled with anxiety, whether it's postpartum anxiety, being a postpartum doula or, um, or just through pregnancy with hormones going up and down. Obviously I've been pregnant 11 times myself. I've walked through grief. I've walked through, um, just the hormonal changes that happen when you go from one trimester to the next, which now I can actually literally feel the hormonal changes hit me the week that I'm switching trimesters where, you know, sometimes you get those feelings where you feel like you're going to cry at the drop of the hat and you don't exactly know why. And you're doing all the things. Maybe you're in the word, you're listening to worship music, you're praying, you're, you're not hangry. So you've eaten, you know, and you're taking care of yourself, but yet there's this still this strong physical sense of, this emotion that is overwhelming. And so I, the reason why I bring that up is because these are things that men don't necessarily struggle with, right? They don't carry Mm -hmm. babies. They don't have those hormonal ups and downs. 
women struggle with that even when they're not um, pregnant during their monthly cycle sometimes. For some women, it's more than others. Um, and so I would encourage you, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because there is, we are going to talk about the spiritual side of anxiety. That's going to be the main focus of this podcast, but I wanted to purposefully acknowledge that there is a physical aspect that's not necessarily spiritual that we need to pay attention to as women and men also have a physical sense as well, especially teenage boys when they're going through puberty. There are different aspects and we need to be wise. We need to get educated, first of all. What supplements do we need to be utilizing and taking to help support our physical bodies so that we're set up for more success? Um, so that doesn't become a temptation for us. And then, then we go to the spiritual side where it's like, okay, I'm struggling with this, but God can help me exercise self-control. Self-control is a fruit of the spirit. We just read that God left his Holy Spirit with us to help us and that he can give us peace. Amen. Peace in times of anxiety. And so there is both the physical element and then there's a spiritual element. Um, and it's our responsibility to do due diligence on the mm -hmm. physical side so that that is not something that we're ever able to use sinfully as a scapegoat for why we don't ever want to justify our lack of self-control because lack of self-control would be sin. We don't want to ever justify outbursts of um, just being mean or angry or frustrated, which can come from being anxious, mm -hmm. but they can also just be be because they're there. There's two different things, right? Um, and so you need to be really introspective. This is where you're responsible for being introspective and honest and humble. So I just wanted to encourage you guys with that aspect. Um, there are some, there are many, many verses in Proverbs and Psalms. And so we thought that we would just share a few of them. Yeah. So guys. in Proverbs 12, 25, anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down, but a good word makes him Glad. So you may be feeling weighed down when this mm -hmm. happens. Uh, that puts you in a vulnerable position, mm -hmm. especially if your kids are acting out and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but a good word. Uh, so one a good word in the Bible, right? Yeah. That's very important. But you know what? We can give each other good words yes. too and encourage each other. Guys, your mm -hmm. wife, if, if she's the one home all day with the kids, mm -hmm. she needs encouragement. You need to keep your issues, challenges with work and things at bay sometimes and mm -hmm. for a better time mm -hmm. um, because you need to be conscious of, you know, where she at, how, what she's been dealing with all day mm -hmm. and, and uh, encourage her and you need to know scripture and you need to pray together and those kinds of things. Super, super important mm -hmm. uh, as well. In Psalm 32, eight, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Be not like a horse or a mule without understanding. Well, we don't want to be like a mule, yeah. right? Yeah. Which must be curved with bit and brittle, or it will not stay near you. And then it continues, the next verse says, Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord. Amen. So like Isaac was saying, we don't want to be like the mule that's stubborn. We want to trust in the Lord, which means we need to cast our cares and our anxieties on him. We need to trust him. But also like there's an element which we'll find in other verses too, where it talks about humility. Like it takes a certain amount of humility to be able to trust in the Lord in situations that are going to cause anxiety where I'll be honest with you, people who don't know the Lord or don't have the Holy Spirit with them, they might think you're kind of nutty for not having anxiety over certain situations. Mm -hmm. I know we've walked through a lot of trials in our marriage and like you guys, there were times where people were like, I can't believe you guys are still so strong, like in your marriage or in the Lord, mm -hmm. but it actually drew us closer to one another and closer to God. Um, because we trusted him and that can be your experience too. That's not anything on Isaac and Angie to be proud of at all. That's totally the Holy Spirit working in our lives and us being humble and trusting God with those things and being humble towards one another, which is really, really important. Now for the guys, it can be easy to have so much weight on your shoulders from work and things happening mm -hmm. and finances and, you know, the challenge of being a provider, uh, especially in these days, uh, to all kinds of things. And sometimes um, we need to keep the noise out so that we can focus on our families. Because if we're still thinking in here and kids are all around us, we can have anxiety because there's too much all at once. We need to like do a check at the car or if you're working from home, do a check before you re-enter in 
and just go, you know, and maybe pray mm -hmm. and go, you know what, I'm going to be, I'm going to let God handle all this stuff. I'm not going to keep dwelling or thinking about it. I'm Whether gonna, it's bills I'm gonna or, I'm focus yeah. on my family mm -hmm. right now. And that's a discipline. And if you're not good at that discipline, it's just like working out in in the gym. You know, it's really hard to get going. But once you get going, you get a rhythm and you get kind of into it, mm -hmm. right? So it's so important that you develop that discipline. Yeah. It's interesting because that remind what you're talking about reminds me of this next psalm that we're going to share. Psalm 55, 22, cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. So mm -hmm. you believe in Jesus? You're the righteous. Mm -hmm. you call, the Bible calls you saints. Mm -hmm. So you won't be moved. But if you are moved, if you are moved into anxiety and wrong ways of parenting and you know frustration and throwing hands up in the air, just like, I can't handle this kind if of... If you're walking in sin, you know, kind of situations, then you're being moved. Mm -hmm. And why are you being moved? Because you're not anchored in biblical mm -hmm. truth. You're not letting those not words in him. hit your eyes. You're probably looking at too much on your phone or too occupied by the world. Mm -hmm. And so we need to be in the world to be an influence, obviously provide all these things are good. God put us here. We're but, in the world. Right, we're, <laughs> we're in the world, the but not world. of the world. We need to right. be strong so we can handle, so we are not moved, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So important. Yeah. So Psalm 56 verse 3 also says, let's see here. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you, in God whose word I praise, in God I trust. I shall not be afraid. What can flesh do to me? Amen. And so obviously, like the, these are the good words. We just read a verse about how a good word can change and make someone's heart go from anxiety to cheerfulness. We read that in another scripture. This is why it's so important to be in the word of God, which is what we are encouraging you to, but you also do need to surround yourself with people who are going to give you good words that are going to, mm -hmm. Isaac talked about husbands leading your wives. Well, women, you also, that this goes both ways. Yeah. Like if you see your husband struggling with anxiety, like you need to be praying for him, but also you need to speak out the truth and help remind him. That's what you guys do for each other is remind each other of what God's word says. Mm -hmm. You need to be relying on the Holy Spirit more than ever. And he will help you. What do we read in the very first verse? He will help you. The Holy Spirit will help you recall the word of God. And yeah. that's not just for you always. And I would say that oftentimes... Women are more expressive about their challenges and men are less expressive about their challenges. Yeah. So if in your marriage, you're really expressive about your challenges on the day, likely your man has challenges that he's not expressive about. And once you've unloaded on him, he suppresses them. Now, sometimes that's wise, but if that goes on is like the normal all the time rhythm, then he might be feeling silently desperate in a way for somebody to listen to his challenges. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's really important that you both practice trusting the Lord with, the Bible talks about casting your anxiety, which we'll talk about in just a second, um, which is really, really important. There are actually many verses in Matthew and in Luke that talk about casting your burdens on the Lord. Um, you don't always need to have a person that you're talking to. Like women, this is a word for you. You don't always need to vent all of the things that you're worried about or concerned about to your husband. You need to use wisdom and how much and when you're sharing things also, just as he would with you. And so, the, but the person that we're supposed to for sure go to is God. Yes, it says carry one another's burdens in scripture as well. And that's part of what we do in loving one another. But God's word is really, really clear. It says, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So if I lay my burdens down on my husband, he may not be able to give me rest from those things. But if I lay my burdens down on the Lord, he can give me rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Mm -hmm. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's Matthew 11, verse 28 through 30. Um, and like I said, you know, there's other verses in Matthew that talk about you know, the, the sparrows, they do not sow, sow nor reap, yet the Father takes care of them. How much more is he going to take care of your children? There's so many passages that talk about 
trusting in God and what he actually wants for his people, his kingdom people. So if you are saved and you're walking with the Lord, you can count on these promises and follow God's guidance. He's very, very clear. Um, he commands us not to be anxious, which is very different. We need to think about like the character qualities of God, right? We're made in God's image. And when he is in us, we are regenerated. When we're born again, we experience the Holy Spirit re helping us recall scripture right? Which is super helpful in times of anxiety, but also he commands us to take every thought captive under the obedience of Christ, which is in Philippians. Amen. And that is a responsibility that we have. And sometimes we have to hold each other accountable and taking those thoughts captive. But how do you take them captive? I want to take a moment and give you something for free, if you haven't got it already, is the date night one sheet. It is a beautiful document you can download that will has some key questions on it for your date night to just get in alignment about what's most important for your family. No matter what time of year, it's always important to recalibrate. You can get that by going to CourageousParenting.com and subscribing to our mailing list. Um, also, you can get all of our show notes and everything at CourageousParenting.com. And I also just want to share real quick about the Parenting Mentor Program. So many families are being transformed by going through this. Uh, it's the six-week self-paced program uh, with live engagement from us and even direct interaction. So if you want to join us, uh, here's a little bit more about it. You can find out more at CourageousParenting.com. Steve and I realized that we were getting too comfortable with the world's vision of how to raise our children. What Angie and Isaac have done in creating this is literally phenomenal. This program provided awesome scripture-based teachings and just some really great practical applications. This class has just really rocked my world. It has given me a vision for not just the different things that we might focus on as parents who are trying to raise our kids biblically, like how our kids are behaving or what we're doing with discipline, but also the things of the heart. We now have a game plan to how we want to raise our children. We have so many answers to the questions that have been in our mind. It's not just these hypothetical situations or it's not just this, here's what I think you should do. It's let me show you where in scripture this is. Do your legacy a favor and yourself a favor and just do it. One of the best things that we've done this year, one of the best investments we've made this year, and I could not recommend it more. We're no longer fearing dark days ahead, but we're so excited to raise lights to be leaders for the next generation. Well, let's get really practical here. I think one of the first ways you can take thoughts captive is by remembering the purpose of parenting. Mm -hmm. The purpose of parenting is to glorify the Father in everything you do, mm -hmm. right? So it's to equip your kids, raise them up so that they glorify God, right? So yeah. that's super, super important. And I, I think sometimes we lose perspective of that, uh, which is important to have. Don't you think, Ange? Oh, for sure. And as far as perspective goes, we have a little visitor who came in to say hi. Hi, Eli. <laughs> There we go. He found Hi. us. Yeah, you did find us. You just got to be quiet. You can sit and you listen. You can sit okay? and listen, but be quiet, okay? So, so, so remembering the purpose, having perspective of what is the real reason we're parenting. Sometimes we're so caught in the mundane, we're so caught in the moment that we forget uh, what the bigger picture purpose mm -hmm. is and we don't have that perspective. And when That's we right. do have that perspective, when we remember our why, then it gives us more patience in the presence. Yeah. <laughs> He's trying to go out, so dad's going to help him real quick. Um, but Philippians 4, I just wanted to encourage you guys with this. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejo rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything. So he's. this is a command declarative sentence. Yeah. It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything... So every care you have, every worry you have, every fear, everything that you may be tempted to struggle with as a human being, okay, let them, let, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. This is very key. We have to have a thankful heart. We have to look for the things that we're learning through the hard things and be thankful for those things, right? So in our prayers, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to god have you brought the things that you're fearful of to god i think that that is just a reasonable question that we have to ask like if i was sitting talking to another mom who was struggling with anxiety the first thing i would say is 
hey, I don't want you to take offense to this at all because I know you're a woman who loves the Lord and prays, but have you taken this to God? And the reason why I think this is such an important question is there are so many times where we can easily become overwhelmed and we don't do what we know is right to do. And sometimes we rely on other people. We'll go to our husbands first before we go to God because we're just overwhelmed and we're not doing what we know we need to be doing. And I just have to say, our husbands are not not God. They're not God. And so, and our friend is not God. And God is actually one of his character attributes is that he is a jealous God and he wants to be our first amen, and our, our utmost. And he wants us coming to him. But this continues and it says, let your request be made known to God. And then guess what happens? The peace that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. And then it tells us to focus on whatever's true, whatever's lovely, whatever's noble. So you've got a couple kids at home. They're young. You've got, you're, you're listening to this and you're like, how do I handle this? I lose uh, control of my kids in a way I feel like, or the day I, you know, uh, I'm having a hard time. I have an anxiety about getting things done. I have anxiety at the end of the day about things I didn't get done. Um, it, you know, the house isn't as clean as I want it to be. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, there's all these things that could cause just really normal things mm-hmm. that cause anxiety in the day. And I think that, you know, we gave you the tip, you know, perspective, you got a perspective. Angie's talking about being anchored in the word in your spiritual life. And taking thoughts captive. And taking thoughts captive. But also, you might need to cr- create some better structure in, in your, your day, yeah. uh, which is really important. That'd be the next main point, I think, is to how could you better structure your day? Mm-hmm. What are some opportunities for that? And Angie, what are some good ideas for that? Yeah, so I would say... If you had a routine, structuring your day, what did we talk about at the very beginning of this podcast? Being aware of like the physical things that are going to potentially impact you to make you anxious. That actually is something you need to put in the beginning of the structure of your day. You need to take your vitamins. You need to take your supplements. You need to make sure you eat so that you are not um, running low on blood sugar and then things are not getting to you as quickly. So there's a physical element of structuring your day. There's being in the word you have to be in the, we just read about how powerful mm-hmm. the a good word literally impacts your heart and mm-hmm. your perspective. Mm-hmm. So you have to be in the word. That is a non-negotiable, okay? Just as like eating is a non-negotiable. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say prayer is a non-negotiable. I know that when I spend time in the word, I, there's a connection to God where I am casting my burdens. We just read these verses about casting your burdens on him. And this is something that you do all throughout the day, but you want to start out your day doing this so that you're not thinking about all of those burdens all day long, okay? Because when you are when you have kids, when you are being taxi cab mom, taking them places, or just even homeschooling, you're going from one test to the next and you're doing laundry, you're doing all the things. I get it. It's easy for you to still, in the back of your mind, have all those things that you're struggling with if you haven't purposefully set aside time to give them to God. You have to give them to God. Um, But also there's an element of confessing to people when you know that you are in your heart still struggling with this. So maybe what you need to do is send a text to some friends. Pray for me about these things that I'm worried about. You could also have a certain, I've seen Angie do this, where there's a certain part of the day where it's quiet time. Mm -hmm. It's They're not napping. It's time where everybody's reading their books. Now your kids might not be old enough to read on their own. Well, they can. They can look at pictures without reading words. And they can go through and you can teach them discipline of having some quiet time Mm -hmm. uh, doing something. That's super crucial for us. I know that that has helped me over the years to keep sanity. I mean, honestly, like to just go, okay, right now I need to do nothing. I need to sit with my tea, have worship music going in the background and not even be reading anything. Just be thinking about the Lord, giving him those things through prayer. Um, and, and worship is another aspect of your routine that I really believe is a game changer for perspective. It helps you to take your thoughts captive. It's hard to worry about things when you have worship music playing in your home. So I would say if you struggle with anxiety, always have worship music playing in your home. That should be part of your daily routine and mm-hmm. structure in your home. And the reason why this is so important. So Isaac mentioned, how does a mom do this when you have kids? But guys, 
if we struggle with anxiety, guess what our kids are potentially going to struggle with when they're older also, Mm -hmm. or even when they are younger. Kids mimic their moms. They're like little mirrors. If you've ever watched a mom on an airplane who's stressed out about having her baby on an airplane and she's just high stress, right? The baby's usually screaming and crying. Mm -hmm. And then there's the moms that are like calm and they're just at peace. Their babies are usually calm and at peace. There is a, we lead our children we lead the atmosphere in our homes. We also lead their hearts and we lead them in what is okay. And they copy, they copy us. They're cop- little copycats because they're mm-hmm. learning how to be big people. And so if we are constantly crying or overwhelmed or sharp or because we have worry in our head or we're, we're struggling with these things, guess what our kids are going to potentially do? They're going to be stressed out. They're going to have anxiety and it's going to manifest itself in different ways, physically and verbally as well. So I think that this is an important thing for us to remember. And there's a scripture that really reminded me of this. And this is, it's interesting. This is second Timothy where Mm. um, Paul is talking to Timothy and he's reminding him in chapter one, verse five through seven says, I'm reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother, Lois and your mother, Eunice. And now I am sure dwells in you as well. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. And the reason why this really stuck out to me, obviously, I, when I was thinking about anxiety, I'm like, well, women struggle with fear. Mm-hmm. What does the Bible say? I did not give you a spirit of fear or timidity, but of soberness, right, right. in our I mind. Men do too. And love. And so there's this element where like, yeah, that came to me. But then I looked at the verses before it and I'm like, whoa, okay. So I, I never really like in my mind realized how much that there's this element for us as moms to realize like we can be teaching our kids the word, right? But if we are walking in fear, imagine if Timothy's grandma and mom were walking in fear all the time. Do you think that they would have cultivated or prepared the soil of their of Timothy's heart to be able to receive the word in the same kind of way? What a beautiful place to where women are leading and the Bible's recognizing it. Um, the spiritual mm-hmm. uh, condition of uh, a child. Right. And so, uh, yes, husbands, you're spiritual leaders in your home, but your wife is a spiritual mm-hmm. leader too, and a crucial one. And uh, there's an example of, you know, Timothy, you know, being, you know, equipped. A rock solid missionary for the Lord, right? And and the Bible yeah. giving credit. To the mom and grandma. Doing. I love and it. It's interesting because like, so a lot of us also probably struggle with, well, my mom was depressed and always had anxiety attacks and I struggle with this. And so people can think that there's this like generational thing that they can't break and change. Let me just tell you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that does not need to continue on in you or into your children. It does not. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you and your mom actually can have a massive impact on your kids. For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. We need to remember that. If we are struggling with fear, it's not from God. It's yeah. actually from the enemy and it's a human response that we personally are tempted to struggle with. And it's a reflection of us not trusting God. It's a, it's a, actually, I know this sounds crazy because a lot of times people will think, oh, well, she's overwhelmed and she's anxious. Maybe she's also depressed or maybe she struggles with her identity and she's not thinking very highly of herself and she's weak. Like people think all these things, but can I just say it's actually a sign of pride for us not to be giving our cares to God. Mm-hmm. Pride is sin. If we are not walking in humility and acknowledging that we can't handle this on our own and crying out to God, there's pride So with, that we need to repent of. So good. So with structure, also kids just really thrive on um, something that's the same, like a rhythm in their life. So super important to create that structure in your life. You know, our bedtimes, routines, and uh, dinner time, and things meals, that are going to make the day go better. Meals kind of anchor things and make sure they're. You, are we exasperating our kids without you know get, getting enough food or enough sleep and these mm-hmm. kinds of things too? And then we're getting exasperated because 
you know, of the chaos, mm -hmm. the feeling of chaos in our home. Yeah. So, so it, there's definitely like a mixture. That's what you're saying. Like yeah. you have to recognize that it's equally important to have the routine and structure as it is the spiritual strength and re reminding yourself of what God's word commands you to do. So we hope this was helpful to you guys, and it's super important. Lean into God. Uh, we're thankful you're part of the movement, mm -hmm. One Million Legacies. And uh, we this next episode, by the way, get ready. We interview Ken Ham mm -hmm. of Answers in Genesis, and we're so excited to give you this episode. Mm -hmm. uh, we think it's going to have a profound impact mm -hmm. on your parenting and perspectives. So thanks yeah. for joining us. See you next time. Hey, thanks for listening to this episode. For more resources, go to Courageous Parenting and CourageousMom.com for free online workshops, blog posts, and best-selling courses. Also, we wanted to quickly tell you about our six-week online parenting mentor program. Isaac and I created a powerful biblical curriculum. Here's how it works. Each week, we release a video with a downloadable parenting packet to make it easy for you to incorporate those teachings directly into your parenting. This is an incredible self-paced program where we cover everything from obedience training to overcoming mistakes most Christians are making. But more than that, it's a supportive community. You'll have access to our private online group, live webcasts, and the Courageous Parenting text message line where Angie and I can send you weekly encouragements straight to your phone. If you're interested in joining our next online parenting mentor program, secure your spot now at CourageousParenting.com. That's CourageousParenting.com.